So, welcome everyone to our today's webinar about Agile IT operations, managing the Apple processes. My name is Ava Johnson, and I'm going to be your host today. First, I would love to show you our agenda. At the beginning of today's webinar, I would love to give you a quick overview about the isolation of development for operation, what is mean, what was the reason. Then a little um, in information about what DevOps is, how DevOps teams should work, and what's the benefits of DevOps. And before the live demonstration, I also would love to give you a um, little overview about what DevOps um, tools should have. And this theoretical session will be followed by a live demonstration and a QA session, hosted by my colleague, um, Shandor Sabo. Before we start with the actual information, a little information about the webinar. The webinar is recorded and it is available at intland.com slash webinar slash events. On this site, you can also find um, information about our upcoming webinars and you can sign up for any upcoming webinar. About Intland software, just a few words. Uh, Intland software was founded in the 1988, 98. Uh, we are headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany, and we also have an office in Silicon Valley, US. Our um, ALM solution called CoBeamer, it includes requirements management, software development management, quick test management, human management, and IT operations with other words, DevOps features. We have clients from different industries, including automotive, technology, defense, finance, medical, and other industries. And um, the first why we're here today is talking about a little bit um, about isolation of development and operation. Um, so if we look at companies today, we see that the development and operation departments are isolated. They often do not collaborate with each other. So let me tell you where this isolation comes from. Back when releasing stuff meant creating a golden disk and copying a few thousand and million copies, any small bug in the software could cause serious damages. The basic objective of the waterfall was to avoid damages by integrating design and testing phases in order to make sure the product at the end is perfect. As a direct result of waterfall method, the development stage of the system development life cycle was isolated from the operation part. It is often a question that um, if this isolation is good or bad for us. So let me give you a quick answer to that question. In today's web-based and mobile application environment, Companies deploy software often and early. With the continuous deployment and development, um, the, the stage of development, quality assurance, and operation are interconnected. We can even say merged. An efficient collaboration between DAV and ops is necessary. So no wonder that big companies such as Google, Facebook, or Amazon are using DevOps. You can ask what DevOps is. Is it a approach, culture, set of values or principles? But technically, we can call it, right? We can call it as an approach, a culture, set of values. So the most important is the DevOps is a practice that brings development and operation together. The merging of the development and operation brings together formerly separated roles and teams, aligning their objectives. But traditionally, the development team aimed to include as many amazing features in the product as possible, while the operation team wanted to make sure that the system was reliable and stable at all times. So with the DevOps, they share the goal of delivering a dependable piece of software that perfectly fits the requirement of the user. 
So we can simply say or call this working staffer. The next uh, is to look into how um, a DevOps team should work. So now you see a visual um, illustration. What I mean by this is that um, DevOps teams focuses on automation. They automate everything from testing to infrastructure. So they automate code testing, workflow, as I mentioned previously, infrastructures. Um, so they write software in small chunks. And um, this is integrated, tested, monitored, and deployed in hours. Doing so, they increase the frequency of deployment and the time to deploy new code. So the development of DevOps-oriented teams also use um, integrated configuration management, change management, and integrated tests. The, um, they often write configuration management code that describes how things should be built and allows them to build infrastructure at scale. As, the, as I mentioned in the second bullet point, they also use a source control system, configuration management, to manage and document all changes. And um, it allows developers to understand how the changes influences the performance. Last but not least, uh, what they use is integrated testing. And uh, integrated testing is important for ops, the operational part of the company, to have visibility into what is being tested and how in order to support and be prepared for what dev, the development team has built. Uh, by using reports and graphs, DevOps, DevOps-oriented team can better identify risky areas. So in other words, I would love to show the benefits of DevOps. So DevOps-oriented teams, so teams they're using DevOps, benefit from uh, more frequent releases or faster time to market, um, lower chance of product failure, so better stab stability, um, faster recovery after unexpected events, increased efficiency through the automation, and um, maintainability and scalability of the R processes. It's always a question what um, DevOps tool should have or what features. But since uh, DevOps is basically agile development extended with IT operations, any tool suitable for DevOps must be designed for agile development with different features. As you can see in the display, features such as budget management, requirements management, change management, services, and so on. Um, however, and I would love to call your attention to the following bullet points. So not all agile development tools are good for DevOps, quite the opposite. Only a few agile development tools are sufficiently integrated or flexible enough to provide what DevOps requires. Typically, ELM software solution that can handle agile hybrid methods of development are good for DevOps because of their adaptability, but it's very important. They must also have service desk functionality. So now that you had a little overview about DevOps, uh, we will move to the live demo. But before we do this, I uh, would love to know a little bit about you by three simple questions. So I would start with that. First, I really would love to know what uh, tools are you using? Uh, right now, is it MS Office, IBM, Jira, HP, or any other? Thank you. Okay, I see some answers coming in. All right, and thank you. Then let's move to the second question. I'm curious what kind of tools are you searching for? Is there a tool, um, requirements management related, testing, 
or an entire development life cycle, so an ALM to agile project management to or multiply agile project with safe related tools. All right, I think that that's all the answer I'll get. Thank you. All right, and then my last question is, uh, which supplement methodology are you using? So it is uh, Agile, Scrum, Waterfall, or the V model, or Hybrid? All right, thank you very much. And now, give me a second, and I'm gonna give you the uh, counter to my colleague. He's gonna tell you uh, about the live demonstration. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Chandor Zabo and I'm working in the development team of uh, Intland uh, to develop CodeBeamer and I would like to introduce some features in CodeBeamer which can help you uh, to implement the processes of DevOps in your uh, company. So the first feature that I it's a unique feature in CodeBeamer. And in the last months, Planner has been developed uh, significantly. I also would like to introduce the latest development in Planner. So Planner is a tool in which you can plan your sprint. You can organize the tasks. You can set up the priorities of the tasks. You can assign the tasks to teams, uh, members, or roles, and uh, you can um, also organize the relations of your uh, work items to user stories and requirements and you can organize your sprints themselves in Planner. You can also uh, set up the story points of and prioritize your tasks and uh, other work items. So the Planner has three sections horizontally, the left section, the center panel and the right section Let's see first the left section. It contains four subsections. The first is the sprints. If you click on the, one of the horizontal icons at the top of the left section, uh, the according uh, section will open up and you can work with it. Uh, and it's a user setting whether it's open or closed. So clicking on the first uh, of these icons, uh, the sprint section opens up and here you can see that we have one sprint in our this 1.0 beta design and implementation sprint and uh, in this section you can create new sprint uh, you can uh, organize the sprints in a tree structure and it also has a context menu you can open the planner of uh, sub sprint uh, even you can reach the test coverage page which I will introduce later by clicking on one of the sprints, the center panel is filtered for that sprint. Only the content of that sprint uh, is displayed. You can also see some summaries about the story points and the number of items in the uh, current sprint in this left panel uh, sprint um, tablet. Uh, clicking on the sprint again will remove the filter and all the items are visible again in the center panel. There is a spe special sprint item, which is called Project Backlog. Project Backlog contains the issues which are not assigned to any uh, release or sprint yet. So you can easily get to the list of unassigned uh, items in your project, and by drag and drop, you can assign them to a sprint easily. Uh, 
this provides you a quick way to fill a sprint or a release with tasks from the project backlog. So, uh, the next section in the left panel is the Teams section. It's a new development in CodeBeamer. The team concept is introduced and uh, it's used in several pages. In this planner, the, in the team section, you can assign your tasks or other work items to teams. Uh, you can define teams in the team tracker and the, the tracker items of the teams are visible in this section if there is a team assigned to the issue. You can assign an issue to a team by using drag and drop. So simply drag and dropping uh, a task to this dev team one will result that dev team uh, it inherits the dev team as an assignment. And you can also filter for teams. It's a cumulative filter. So whatever you click will be included in the filter. Now uh, we display uh, the uh, items of Dev Team 1 and Dev Team 2. And uh, clicking on uh, the items again will remove the filter. And once all are uh, un unchecked, the center panel will be loaded with the uh, items of the entire sprint again. So the filter is unapplied. Um, you can also set the team of an uh, issue in the center panel by clicking on the, the team column and then an editor will uh, appear and if you start to type uh, the name of the team uh, there is an increment of in filtering and uh, the matches are displayed for you. You can choose by clicking and on enter the setting is saved. So that's the teams section. We also have a member section in which if you assign to uh, assign a, a work item to a role uh, in this column, it's visible in the assignees column, um, then uh, it's visible in the members uh, section and you can filter for it. Clicking on the developer will show the items belonging to the developer only. And uh, this green dot after the username, it means that this user is online currently. So uh, that's the members uh, section. You can also edit the members by clicking on this rectangle in the center panel. And the, the same way as the team, you can edit also the assignee. And finally, we have the relations tab. Uh, in the relations tab, you can see the requirements and the user stories belonging to the requirements. And you can filter the center panel based on this uh, view. If you click on this requirement audio formats, only the items belonging to audio format and the child uh, user stories will appear in the center panel. If you click on it again, the, uh, the filter is unapplied. Uh, it's a new development that we have uh, a context menu in the uh, uh, in this relations tab and in using the context menu you can edit the item the user story or the requirement you can edit it in easily in an overlay or you can um, change the color uh, you can create uh, sub items like tasks or bugs or change requests uh, in an overlay from this menu and you can also update the color and once you update the color uh, the item is uh, re repainted and also the dependent items are repainted with the new color. So that's the relations tab. In the center panel you can do several things. Here we also for each item we have a context menu in which you can find edit and you can duplicate the item and there is an extensive set of uh, menu items uh, 
for the prioritization of the uh, work items and uh, for ranking. So you can send the work item to the top of this list, the bottom, send to the middle, and send up to te up up by 10 items, up by 25 percent, and down by 10 items or 25 percent. So it helps your work uh, ranking the work items in one sprint and prioritization. We also have a filter in the top of the center panel in which you can filter your items by project and tracker. So you can, you can um, set up that you would like to see only one project and in that project only the tasks or bugs or uh, user stories. It's a, it's a very powerful fil filtering uh, drop-down. And um, on the, uh, on, in the center panel, you can set up the teams, you can set up assignees, as I already demonstrated, and you can set story points by clicking in the story point cell, uh, in story point column, and by using this control and then pressing enter, the story point values are saved. And in the uh, in the left side uh, markers, the story points are summarized so that you can see that for each role or user, how many story points are assigned. The same uh, the same is true for teams. Um, yes. So that's our planner. Uh, one more thing. On the left, uh, the right panel, there are four uh, sections. The first is the information. If you click on an item in the center panel, uh, you can see the details in the first section. So here you can see the properties or attributes of this tracker item, also the status. In a separate section, you can see the uh, description of the item. Since it's a wiki, we provide more place to display it. And there is a new development. We separated the associations into a new sub-tab so that you can see the associations separated. And the, finally, we have the comments and attachments tab in which you can see the already added comments and you can add the comment by clicking on the add comment link, which will open an overlay so that you don't lose your context. Here on this view, you can create a new team by one click, clicking on this uh, top menu. You can create new sprint and new item too. Uh, so uh, from the planner, with one click, you can reach the next feature uh, which is completely new. It is the test coverage of the sprint. The test coverage view will provide you information about how much your sprint is tested, how many test cases are created, how big percentage of your sprint is covered by test cases, and uh, how many of the test cases were run and what are the results of the tests. Uh, the core of this view is a tree view here. It, it, call, it, it contains the, the trackers of this print by, uh, separated by projects. And for each tracker item, it also displays the test cases and the status of the test cases. So in, um, not covered means the blue tablet, it means that there is no test case created for this work item yet. The incomplete means that there is a test case, but it was not completely run. And we also... All the, uh, the, the results are accumulated uh, based on several rules. You can choose to use the AND rule or the OR rule. It means that if it's the AND rule, if any of the test cases failed of one feature, then the testing of this feature fails. 
the OR rule means that if uh, there is a successful test, then we can say that this feature is passed. Uh, here in this checkbox, the calculate coverage with OR, you can choose the method. The default method is AND, so the stricter method. Uh, here on, in this view, you can also see the last 10 runs of a test if uh, there is a test case uh, verifying a certain work item. And if there are several runs of this test uh, case, you can see here the last 10 runs and the results of the last 10 runs. If there is a failed test, uh, then this uh, rectangle would be uh, uh, red and this rectangle is in the same time a link to this test run which uh, which was already uh, finished. So that's our view in which interactively you can browse through all your work items in the sprint and see the coverage and the test results concerning to that feature. Uh, but in the same time we also provide statistics if you click on the test coverage statistics link or section, then it expands and here you can see um, the, the projects and trackers, so it's broken down to trackers and, um, and for each tracker you can see the summary of testing, how many of the test cases or how big percent of the test cases or, or of the uh, work items were already tested and passed or partly passed or failed or blocked, how many of them are incomplete or simply not covered, so there is no test case for them, and overall how many of them are covered. So it's an extensive set of information in which you can find uh, most likely what you want to know about testing, so that's statistics, and you can also filter this view by several filter criteria. For example, you can filter it by coverage. So it's possible that you would like to see the items which are not covered yet, there is no test case for them, or you would like to see that uh, the items which are already covered by test cases and the test cases were run and they were passed, or they were failed. All of these options are possible using this coverage filter. You can filter for each each project, each tracker by their own status, so that the uh, uh, work items in only a certain status, you, you, you would like to see only them, it's also possible. You can filter by tracker, project and tracker. You can filter by test configuration, so that the, uh, the configuration on which the tests were performed and you can filter by the release to which the test runs are assigned. So if you have testing cycles represented by releases, you can filter for testing cycles using this test run release dropdown. Um, you can also filter by the number of recent test runs, which you can see in the last 10, ten runs uh, column. Uh, you can also filter uh, on when the test run was uh, performed and you can uh, also filter by the testers. So in this run by drop-down there is a list of users who, uh, to whom the test runs were assigned and who performed the actual testing and you can filter the results based on the tester too. And we have also an interesting drop-down called feature stability. And we consider a feature stable if in the last 10 runs all of the runs were passed, so green. Uh, then it's stable, otherwise it's unstable. So you can filter also based on this criteria. So that's our new development which is called a test coverage view. And now let's see the next topic, which is Jenkins integration. So to support continuous integration, we, we developed uh, a method to integrate Jenkins with CodeBeamer. 
and I will introduce this integration. So the beginning of the integration is creating test cases which are automated. Uh, in, your, in, in your code beamer instance you simply create test cases, you note the IDs of the test cases, you call them and eventually you describe them somehow, that's the first step. Uh, here you can see that in this example we have a test case folder CPU tests and in this folder we, we have three test cases, addition test, subtraction test and multiplication test. So these are three test cases with their own IDs and with their own properties. In the next step you simply have to organize your test cases into a test set. Here you can see that we created a test set containing the three test cases and here you can also see the status of the test cases which is a special status which is called automated. After creating the test set uh, the next uh, thing is to provide and uh, the implementation of the test cases to be able to run it automatically and for this we provided a sample uh, uh, Java class, the arithmetic test to Java. If you check the source code you can see that we are using annotations in order to, or to assign the test code to the test cases. So here you can see the, this annotation test case ID equals 1007 which means that this test method belongs to the test case with ID 1007 and here you can see the implementation, it's a very simple example implementation. So this is how you assign your test code to the test cases and uh, once you uh, implemented your test code, uh, the next thing you have to do is uh, you create a build in Jenkins and now let's take a look to the configuration of this build. So here in this configuration basically there is nothing special, two things are specific to CodeBeamer. The first thing is the build trigger. This build trigger is a groovy script and it will return true or false depending on you should run this build or you shouldn't run at a certain interval, a certain time. So it means that uh, in a loop uh, this um, script is run and once it returns true the build itself starts. What are the criteria which decide whether it's true or false? This script tries to find a test run in CodeBeamer which is in in-progress status and which contains automated test cases. Test cases with the status automated. So that's what it does practically. Uh, it means that each minute it pulls the system and if here in test runs you create a test run which is in progress this automatically, this um, uh, Jenkins build will start automatically and performs the tests uh, which are defined in the test code. Once the tests are uh, performed, another Groovy script is running and this Groovy script injects the, the result of the Jenkins build into CodeBeamer. So with Remote API it connects to the CodeBeamer instance and uh, it uh, uh, finds a tracker with this tracker ID and uh, it injects back the results, set up the status of the test runs and the result of the test runs and injects the, the uh, details of the test results into the test runs. So if we just uh, restart this test run, we will restart it with rerun all tests. Now it's in in progress and uh, very soon we will see that that CBCI demo will start in one minute and it will inject 
the results. If uh, during the running of the test uh, there is an exception, for example, then the stack trace of the exception is injected into the test case. Here we can see that it starts automatically. The running is starting. And here, if we check the log, we can see that it very quickly performed these tests. And uh, we can see that there is one test error. One test was failed. We deliberately implemented the test case to fail to demonstrate to you how it behaves if it fails. Here we can see that so once one test was failed. And now, let's see uh, what happened to this test run. If I reload the test run page, I can see that the test run is completed. And all the test cases here are completed. Two of them are passed. One is failed. So if we uh, just uh, open the details of the failed test case, in the description, we can see the injected stack trace of the exception which was thrown in the test code. So this is how we integrate uh, Jenkins uh, with CodeBeamer in order to perform automatic test uh, cases based on test code. The next feature that I would like to introduce is uh, Jenkins uh, trend up, result trend updater plugin. It's a different plugin uh, with different purpose and it provides you the possibility to take any kind of Jenkins build and inject the build results into a wiki page in CodeBeamer. So let's see this uh, Jenkins build. Uh, the Jenkins build, if we click on configure, we will see that the Jenkins build is just an ordinary Jenkins build. There is one special thing here in the, in the post build uh, actions. We can see that there is a specific action, CodeBeamer test result trend updater. It's a registered CodeBeamer plugin. So if any Jenkins, you just click on add plugin. In this list, you will see in the alphabetical list the CodeBeamer test result trend updater plugin because it's registered in Jenkins. And once you add this plugin, you can choose it from the post build actions. And you choose it, you set up the wiki page URL, the username and password, and the results will be injected into this wiki page, which, it, uh, which is mentioned in the configuration. The wiki page itself contains a graph containing the data of test results uh, based on dates so that each run is put into a date cell and the number of failed tests, you can see them, and the duration of the test is also displayed in another graph with a with different color. So that's the graph. Here we can see that uh, 24, 22 October, we had four um, results, four uh, failed tests, and then in um, the same day we had in the later run two. The next run was 11 November. It increased to five and the, the subsequent run went down to three. So it's a simple graph. The more, um, the more runs you have in Jenkins, the, the more beauty is the graph, but it's, it's only uh, aesthetics. So uh, in the same time, you can see the builds and the data of the builds in a table-like structure or a list-like like structure. Each build has a table. And in the table, you can see the duration of the test, the test results, how many tests were failed from how many, which is the complete number. And you can see a link to the tested changes. You can see the changes in source code management, what was the change in this build and you can, uh, you can have also a custom property, which is a repository. 
And for each build, it's inserted into the wiki page. This one is a completely new development. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And now I would like to return the presenter to uh, Eva. Thank you. And there is only two things I would love to show you before we close for today. Uh, first of all, uh, the Agile Requirements webinar next uh, Wednesday. So please feel free to join us. And another one is a Cobimer user conference next Thursday in Stuttgart. Before we close for today, I have the last question for you.